So, what would it be like if we all walked free of fear and punishment? <laughs> <You're> like, <"Huh?" laughs> Several of you just gave me that puppy look. <laughs> of what do you speak, silly man? <laughs> it's hard to even conceive, isn't it? Because we were born and raised on planet Earth. And our social structure is quite literally founded and bound by reward punishment. When we do what people want, they reward us. When we do what people don't want, they punish us. It starts in infancy and it continues. I love how Don Miguel Ruiz articulates our programming in the first chapter of the Four Agreements. So if you know the Four Agreements and you don't know the first chapter, go back and study the first chapter. Because the first chapter really empowers us to live those Four Agreements. And what he talks about, he essentially equates our language with the programming code of our computer. The challenge of changing our mental thoughts and our mental atmosphere is that we're using the same language to change it that programmed it. Now think about that for just a minute. So very often what happens is we wind up reinforcing the very thing we're trying to change. Anybody other than me had that, I keep working on this, why does it keep showing up? <laughs> or is it just me? Uh, it could be. Uh, it could be. Yeah. Yes, you just <laughs> <laughs> You can always count on your practitioners to have your back. It's just you, man. <laughs> That's because we haven't changed the meaning of the words we're using. Our mind doesn't automatically shift that for us. When we hear the word good, a movie goes off in our head about what that looks like. And if we don't change the script of the movie, then that word continues to mean the same thing. So if we're going to get free of fear and punishment, the first thing we have to do is change the meaning of fear and punishment. So I invite you to consider that real fear, healthy fear, because there is such a thing. Yeah. We talked about this a little bit last week. Every living thing that has the ability to scurry away from a threat to its life does so. That's real fear. It's half of your autonomic nervous system. You're supposed to have it or you wouldn't have it. Okay? It is solely designed for the preservation of your physical life. That's it. Pay attention to it. It's a gift. Now, if you're sitting in the comfort of your living room where there is no viable, imminent threat, and you're scaring yourself into complete immobility, <laughs> that ain't fear. That's messed up thinking. <laughs> it's just messed up thinking. We sit there and we ruminate on the worst possible what if scenarios. What if this? What if that? What, what if you got up off the couch? What are you thinking that? <laughs> Just saying, if we're going to what if, let's, let's toss in some what if I quit lying to myself and pray? What if 
instead of spending money to protect against something that isn't real, I spent that money on a practitioner session to help me shift my consciousness. See, what if isn't the problem? It's what we fill in after the if that's the problem. And who's in charge of that? You are. You are. You are the only thinker in your mind. And so if you put someone else there in charge of your thoughts, if you're living in that place where I can't help it, whoever you have assigned that authority to, you did that. They didn't. No one has control to capture your mind and use it at will. I believe it was Eleanor Roosevelt that said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. It's the same thing. No one can make you believe a lie without your consent. Now that does not mean that we are not living in a time where we have lots of options to choose from. Because we are bombarded with lies every minute. And we're at choice. If we want to live sacred social activism, that begins in your own mind. Before you put your feet on the street to do something, you have got to get clear about what is true and what is a lie. Mother Teresa was invited to anti-war protests on a regular basis. You know how many she went to? Not one. You know why? because she refused to support war. She'd tell people, when you have a peace march, I'll be there. But I'm not going to an anti-war march. Because she wasn't anti-war. She was pro-peace. Ernest Holmes, <laughs> rumor has it, when people would invite him to attend a retreat, he would say no. But if you have an advance, I'll come to that. <laughs> we have to reframe what we're telling ourselves. Do we want to retreat or do we want to advance? Do we want peace or do we want to be about anti-war? Once in a while I get these downloads in the middle of a talk. And if I seem distracted, I am, because sometimes I'm arguing with those downloads. <laughs> but here you have it. I'm, I'm like surrendering here. I see so many posts on Facebook. If you're not familiar with Facebook, it's a social media platform. It has so many benefits, and it can be an amazing tool. And it can also perpetrate the worst of us. And very well-meaning people routinely post a meme, which is just a picture with words, that says, love trumps hate. Now I ask you, which of those three words most, most do you hear? <laughs> Some of us do, but that's not what the majority of us hear. <laughs> so every time you post that, even though it might be well intended, consider that you might be fueling the very thing you want to quiet. Ernest Holmes says, and the servant by the sea, find me someone who is for something and against nothing. He goes on with a whole list of things. 
And what he's really talking about is for each of us within ourselves to find that place where we are for something and against nothing. Where's your focus? What are you fertilizing? Because we're all energy. That's all that's on, that's all that the universe is. It's just energy. And where we focus our energy expands that energy. Energy, quite literally, scientifically, is the potential for movement. What movement are you expanding? Where's your focus? Do you want to expand love? Do you want to expand compassion? Do you want to expand brilliance? Or do you want to expand something else that starts with B? And has an S in it. <laughs> Just say, y'all are smart, figure it out. <laughs> what is it that you want to move because that's where our focus has to be. If you want to grow compassion, you have to be willing to see people's pain. See, a lot of us want to turn off the TV and not see one another's pain. I watched a woman from Thousand Oaks whose son survived the mass shooting in Los Angeles. I mean, in Las Vegas. And he was killed in the mass shooting in Thousand Oaks. And I watched her plead, stop sending me your love. Stop sending me your prayers. Do something to make a change. I don't want your love. I don't want your prayers. I want gun control. Are her words. Now I'm not telling us to stop praying. I'm not telling us to stop love. What I'm telling us is that it doesn't go far enough if that's all we do. Ernest Holmes said, treat and move your feet. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. See, if we're just doing science of mind from the neck up, you've missed the boat. This is a philosophy of faith. In the very last part of that title, a way of life. If science of mind is not your way of life, then you are still living in fear and punishment. Because there's something operating in your consciousness, and Rev D touched on it yesterday. We got to come out of our spiritual closets. Yeah. <laughs> But how many of us are reticent to let the people in our lives know what we really believe and what we hold precious and the spiritual principles that we live by because what are they going to think about me? Who cares? Really? And I invite you to consider if you really cared about them, you would share the magnificence that you have. Think about that. I love you so much. I have this amazing tool that can completely change your life. I'm not going to tell you about it. <laughs> you might think something about me. They will. Truth is, they already do. <laughs> you know how you know? Because you think stuff about them. We all have thoughts about one another all the time. Get over it. Really. And where would your life be? 
had someone not share this philosophy with you. We have this notion in a significant portion of our movement that lives behind this nice, tidy little, well, when it's right, people will find it. When children are hungry, some of us actually hide behind, well, that's just how it's supposed to be, and then the food will show up. Really? We're so entrenched in fear and punishment that we participate in it without even knowing it. If people are hurting, see their pain. Don't see them as flawed, but see their pain. Because in seeing their pain, it touches something inside of you that is willing to stand with them in their pain. See, it's one thing to stand at the top of the ditch and look down and go, yeah, wow, <laughs> you're kind of pretty far down there. That must really be hard. Um, I'm going to pray for you, though, because <laughs> I know there's a way out while you're standing beside a rope. So at the very least, hold a rope. Hold on to one end of it. <laughs> you laugh, but some people would just throw it around. I'm throwing my rope. I don't know how they're not coming out. But what would it be like to get in a ditch with them? and start filling in the ditch so you both get lifted up until they're out of the ditch and there's no ditch. That's what this philosophy empowers us to do. It empowers us to safely, without fear, get in the ditch and use these principles to fill in the ditch. And as we fill in the ditch, the dirt level rises and we stand higher and higher till there is no ditch. That's what changing consciousness does. If you love people, annoy them with sharing this gift. Eventually, they'll be grateful. Let's take this in prayer. Hmm. How good it is to know that there has always been, that there is now, and that there will always be just one infinite, ever-present source of perfect love, of perfect peace, of abundance, intelligence, perfect order, that creates out of itself, by itself, to be itself, to know itself. That that is my life. And it is the life of all in form. And so in that truth, the divine knows itself when it sees itself. And so we open to a greater experience of being that, of being that physical presence so that the divine in one another can recognize itself. Ah, there you are. There you are. Grateful for this opportunity to know the truth, to share the truth, to stand unembarrassingly in the truth, to shout it from the rooftops so that all have the opportunity to come home to themselves. Mm. And it is from this place of gratitude that I release my word, which is the word of the divine spoken as me through me mm. into the law which already said yes, only knows yes, and has already said it. And I invite you 
in the sincerity of your heart if it is your prayer too to join me as we say together. Yes. So it is.